This is a M18 battery, and this is a Texas Instruments development board with spy-by-wire functionality. And we're going to use this board to extract the firmware from this chip on the battery. You can see I've got a bunch of spring-loaded needle probes set up onto this HD1 pad. Red is pad 1, orange pad 2, yellow pad 3, and black pad 4. On the dev board, red is 3.3 volts, orange is spy-by-wire TDIO, yellow is spy-by-wire TCK, and black is ground. Now, one important note is that this will only work on Milwaukee batteries with an MSP430 chip. So these are two 2 amp hour batteries with different microcontrollers. This is an MSP430, the G2744, and this is the Renesas R5F100BCA, I think. Um, they're only six months apart, or thereabouts, a bit more. This is a June 2015 battery, and this is a March 2016 battery. So. Seems that 2015 and earlier has the MSP430, 2016 and later has the R5F. And the R5F chips from that era did not have flash codes, no flash codes, whereas this one does have flash codes. If you're not sure which chip you have, the obvious identifier is that the MSP430 is a larger chip with 40 pins, and the R5F is a smaller chip with 32 pins. Now, I need to warn you all that I don't fully understand what I'm doing here. This method of extracting firmware was taught to me by people much smarter than I am. So, I don't fully understand it, and there is a risk of bricking your battery if you do this. So, to get this to work, once you've hooked it all up, we go inside the computer and use a Texas Instruments program called UniFlash. We go here, this will normally be set to auto, but you can do auto or manual. I think manual works best. We can now click on detect, and after a few seconds, it will give us this. G2744 is what we want to see. Um, some batteries, some of the older ones, it will sometimes say G2XX3. And if you get that, you have to choose the you have to choose the G2533. We've got the G2744, and we click on this one here that says on chip. And click USB 1 and start. And we should have a connection. And then we want to go over here and click on the side here where it says memory. And this takes us into the memory of the chip and it's all the memory, it's the flash memory and the RAM and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we'll click on read target device and if everything works good, all these values will get populated. Do, 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 do. There we go. Excellent, so we've grabbed everything. Now we choose export and we'll go start address zero and end address Four Fs, and that's the entire address space. It's a 16-bit chip, so it has a 64 kilobyte address space, but it's only a 32 kilobyte chip. So most of that 64 kilobyte address space is empty, but we'll grab all of it because it's actually all useful. The RAM is stored at a different address to the code and so on. So it's easiest to just grab the whole lot. And you click on browse, choose a file name. Click Generate, and we are done. So now that we've extracted the firmware, we're here in a program called Imhex. It's a program for looking at binary data, hex files. And here we are looking at the difference of two um, firmware dumps. This dump was the first one I ever did on this battery, and this one is the second one I've done on it after giving it a full charge cycle. So at the start, the zero address, this is all peripherals and not super interesting, timers and whatnot. If we scroll down a bit to this address, so 0200 <clears throat> is where the RAM starts. 
and we can see some interesting values here. This first one here, <coughs> OB06, is uh, 2822 as a 16-bit integer, and that was the flash code for days since first charge. Now that's verified from looking at the flash codes. And then on the next one that I did, something went a bit wacky and the day since first charge was 2797. Sometimes this number can be a bit weird, so I think that's normal. This number here, E1, 225. That was the flash code for number of charge cycles. And then after putting it on the charger, we get an E2, which is 226. So that's increased as we'd expect. Some other interesting values here are 0B, C4. It's a little endian, so you kind of have to read the right one first and then that one. But that is uh, 3,012 millivolts. It's a cell voltage. The next one is 3,003. Next one, 3,006 millivolts, so 3.003. 2.997 volts and 3.003 volts. So that's all the five cell voltages. And then this number is the pack voltage, 15.021 volts. And I verified that with the multimeter. And then over here, after the charge cycle has been done, we're now at 4.061, uh, 4.058, etc., etc. And the pack voltage is at 20.29. So Lots of interesting information here. This is in the RAM, so the active memory, things that are constantly being changed. If we scroll down a lot, you'll see all that's basically empty space that doesn't exist because, as I said, it's a 64 kilobyte address space, but there's only 32 kilobytes of information in there, and plus a kilobyte of RAM and some other stuff. Uh, this bit here, I think, is the bootloader. Yeah, that's the bootloader. Here's an interesting space from a thousand onwards is where they keep a lot of the uh, important parameters in sort of a permanent thing. So this is, there's our E1 and E2, the, um, the number of charge cycles. So that's the only thing that's changed in that permanent address space. And then there's a whole bunch of blank nothing until we get to 8,000. And 8,000 is where the program memory starts. So this is the actual program that runs the battery from here onwards. And it's not huge. So it goes from 8,000 to FFF, which is your 32 kilobytes. And it occupies da -da 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 -da. Oh, nearly most of it. Oh, okay. It runs up to this address here, E E F E zero. It looks like it's using about eighty percent of the code space. I'll figure it out a bit later. But yeah, we're working on analysing that code to figure out if there's anything interesting that we can tell you guys. Now, every time you do a firmware extraction, the battery will become unresponsive. You can push the button and nothing will happen. And sometimes, just putting it on a charger will reset it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, that reset it. And we're awake again. And we can now run a tool. But sometimes that doesn't happen sometimes you'll get blinking red and green there and the battery's in like a soft lock status and the way to fix that is you look at these HD1 pads I need a pointer it's a terrible pointer this HD1 pad that we were connected to earlier you need to use a piece of wire to connect pad 2 to pad 4. Pad 2 is reset on the chip and pad 4 is ground. So you hold those together for a few seconds and that'll reset it and you can put on the charger and so far it's worked every time for me. About three or four times I've um, sort of soft locked the battery and had to do that reset.